here once again to 4th Avenue Bible Church and uh, our online gathering. I want to welcome you here and uh, just say what a joy it is to be here with you today. Wherever you're watching this, whenever you're watching this, we just uh, welcome you here to 4th Avenue Bible Church uh, today. And um, just a, by way of a few announcements, before we get into uh, the message today, I just wanted to make you aware that um, with the numbers increasing that the government has allowed us to meet in person, uh, the lead team has made a, a decision to open up the church for smaller groups. And so for more information on that, please check the uh, communication memo that we send out to you because um, there's information on there on some of the procedures and some of the things that uh, we've talked about uh, as far as smaller groups coming together once again here at the building. I want to remind you that next week we have, we're have we going to be having a recap discussion on this whole series that we've been talking about, the Holy Spirit. And so we invite you to send in questions. So if you have any questions that have uh, arisen from the, the series, whether it was before the shutdown or, or during these videos, we just ask that you would send in some questions and we'll try to answer those as best we can uh, in next week's video. And then uh, just a note again, on June 14th, we're going to be having a community service and we'll provide you with a link. It, it will be a different link. It won't be on our YouTube channel to start. We'll post it here later. Um, but uh, it'll be a community service and, and it starts at 1030 on June 14th in the morning. Uh, our guest speaker will be Pierre Gilbert. He's a, a professor at the MB Seminary here in Winnipeg. Uh, part of the building where CMU meets and uh, music will be led by Cornerstone Servants. They're a, a group of young people coming out of CMC Church and uh, so we invite you to join us uh, on June 14th as a, as a community service. Why don't you join me in prayer as we uh, dig into the lesson this week. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to gather again and, and we know that the church uh, the body of believers is not a building. And so we thank you that regardless of where we are right now, that uh, we can gather together and we can, we can feel each other's nearness through the Spirit and know that we are uh, worshiping still together as a body, uh, despite the fact that we can't uh, meet in person right now. And so we just thank you for that. Uh, we pray that you would speak to us today about your Holy Spirit as we uh, dig into your word a little bit and as we have a study here on uh, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And so we pray all of these things in your name. Amen. One of the small joys that comes up in life is the opportunity to give someone a gift. I'm not a gift person, personally. Um, I find it quite difficult to give people gifts, but... Gift giving is exciting. Birthdays are more exciting when you give someone something. Um, I find as a parent, Christmas gets a little bit more exciting simply for the opportunity that I get to give my, my kids some gifts. Uh, and their enthusiasm uh, just abounds and, and, and we get worked up because of their enthusiasm. But I don't give my kids the same gifts. Uh, it's true that sometimes we might give them something similar, but um, we don't give them the same gifts. Most of the gifts we give our children are actually quite different. And we do this because their personalities are quite different. Things my daughter likes, my son might have no interest in. Or likewise, the things that my son enjoys, my daughter has no interest in. And so we have to... Uh, tailor their gifts to their personality and, and try to suit who they are. Now let me ask you this. Have you ever gotten a gift when, after unwrapping it, you thought to yourself, ah, this person really didn't know me at all. What am I going to do with this gift? Or perhaps you've given someone a gift knowing it would be something that they would enjoy immensely. And you see their face as they open it. And you know that instantly you nailed that gift. You nailed that present. It couldn't really have been much better. Have you ever considered that that is how God 
relates to each one of us. Over the last while, we've been journeying through this discussion on the Holy Spirit, as I said. And last week, we, we began this discussion on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So just as a quick recap, um, the passages you'll see on the screen that deal with specifically with gifts of the Spirit are Romans chapter 12, 1 Corinthians 12, and Ephesians chapter 4. And as a reminder, each passage tells us that Christians are part of the body of Christ and as such are to work in unity together to accomplish what God has called them to do. We're also reminded that every believer of Jesus Christ has been given at least one gift through the Spirit because the Spirit is a source of all gifts. And Paul reminds us in 1 Corinthians 12, 7 that the gifts are given to us so we can help each other. And from the three passages listed earlier, we're told of a variety of gifts. There is wisdom, knowledge, faith, prophecy, discerning of spirits, which is the ability to discern whether something comes from God or not. There are apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers. There is the gift of helps, and some people use the word service, as in serving others. There's the gift of administration, leadership, or governance, if you want to call it that, and generosity. And finally, there are gifts of healing, miracles, speaking in tongues, and interpretation of tongues. And these last gifts are considered by many as sign gifts, if you can, if you can say it that way. Um, Billy Graham notes, they seem to rate the most attention in the church today, exciting the imagination and producing outward manifestations that attract multitudes. And so there you have it. The gifts that we have been given as Christians and we receive from the Holy Spirit as children of God. Now, unfortunately, we don't have time to go through all of the spiritual gifts uh, as I would like to. But rather, what I want to do today is address a few of the things that, about the gifts that often generate questions within Christian circles. Our first observation today is that not everyone is gifted with every gift. And we don't get to choose which gifts we are given. When we look at the gifts of the Spirit specifically, the Apostle Paul is clear that not everyone receives every gift. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 12, 29 and 30, Are we apostles? Are we all prophets? Are we all teachers? Do we all have the power to do miracles? Do we all have the gift of healing? Do we have the ability to speak in tongues, in unknown languages? Of course not. And here we see that Paul tells us clearly that not everyone will be given one of the gifts. Yet there are groups that believe this is the case. For instance, there are certain groups of people within different Christian circles that believe everyone can speak in tongues. Over the last number of years, there's been a growing number of people that teach that everyone can heal. And we see from these verses that very clearly that Paul is telling us that is not the case at all. God does not give everyone one particular gift. My opening illustration fits in well here. As a recipient, we don't get to choose the gifts we receive for our birthday or for Christmas or special event. The giver chooses the gift. Part of the problem with in uh, the Western world in society today is that for the most part we can we think that we can get whatever we want. If we don't get what we want, we throw a hissy fit until we get it. And, and what happens is we think that we can carry the same mentality over into our Christian faith. We think that we can demand from God the gifts that we want because we want them. It is often the case that the individual Christian pays no attention to what God knows they actually need. And there's a difference. Rather, they think that they want something 
and they go after God to get it. And when they don't get it, they assume that maybe God hasn't heard them, and instead of accepting no as an answer from God, they continually plead their case. And this is the case with spiritual gifts as well. An individual may think that the gift of healing would be really cool to have because it's really cool. But maybe God doesn't want them to have that gift. The individual that is asking for that gift of healing, let's say, may be the last person that God chooses to have the gift of healing. It may be that that individual will become prideful or arrogant because they prayed and healed someone. They may steal the glory from you. This goes back to our lesson last week. Do not rob God of the glory when He works through you using the spiritual gifts that He has given you. And, and some people use their gift and steal that glory from God. And God knows this. And so rather than give a person a spiritual gift that would ultimately be a stumbling block, He may actually not give that person a particular gift. Billy Graham writes, while we are held accountable for the use of any gifts he gives, we have no responsibility for gifts we have not been given, nor are we to covet what someone else has, has or be envious of that person. We may wish to have certain gifts and ask for them, but if it is not the will of the Holy Spirit, we will not get what we ask for. And if we are dissatisfied because the Holy Spirit does not give us the gifts we want, we sin. In other words, we may want a particular gift, and if it pleases God, He will give it to us. But He may choose not to, and we must be okay with that. As well, we must not desire a gift that someone else has or be envious of them. They are responsible for the gifts that they have been given. And you are responsible for the gift or gifts that you have been given. To covet or be envious of another is sin. And this brings us back to what we said last week. When we decide or fail to use the gifts that God has given us, we are sin. The purpose of our gifts is to help each other. To help the body of Christ grow in maturity and in their relationship with God. And so that's the first observation that we're looking at this morning. We don't get to choose our gifts, and God does not gift everyone with one particular gift. Our second observation today has to do with what gifts we are seeking. To quote from Graham, or sorry, the quote that I just read from Billy Graham a moment ago hints at this where he writes, we may wish to have certain gifts, and we may even ask for them. Now, it is true that there are gifts that, dare I say, attract more attention than others, and many of those are, are things like I have in mind speaking in tongues or healing, because, because of the outward manifestation of those gifts. There's something about that's very attractive about gifts like that. But as we read through the passages on spiritual gifts, the Apostle Paul tells us that there are better gifts than things like tongues or healing. In 1 Corinthians 14, 1-3, Paul writes, Let love be your highest goal, but you should also desire the special abilities the Spirit gives, especially the ability to prophesy. For if you have the ability to speak in tongues, you will be talking only to God, since people don't, won't be able to understand you. You will be speaking by the power of the Spirit, but it will all be mysterious. But the one who prophesies strengthens others, encourages them, and comforts them. And in just a few verses later, in verse 5, he writes, I wish you could all speak in tongues, but even more, I wish you could all prophesy. For prophecy is greater than speaking in tongues, unless someone interprets what you are saying, so that the whole church will be strengthened. 
And Paul then goes on a long discourse about speaking in tongues. And if you want to do some uh, study on speaking in tongues, then, then uh, read the rest of that chapter in, in 1 Corinthians 14. So yes, there may be gifts of the Spirit that at least outwardly are more flashy. They draw more attention. As I said, things like speaking in tongues or healing, and those manner of things. However, Paul reminds us as believers that if we desire to have any one of the spiritual gifts, we should be asking for prophecy. Prophecy is the means through which we strengthen each other. It's, it's the way we encourage each other and it's the way we comfort each other. However, even within Christian circles, there is a misunderstanding of what prophecy is. It has been my experience over the years that many Christians believe that prophecy has to do with apocalyptic or eschatological times. In other words, they think that prophecy has something to do with end time things. The reasoning behind this stems from if they read books like the book of Daniel in the Bible or, or especially Revelation. Yes, these two books deal specifically with end-time things or end-time prophecy, but the spiritual gift of prophecy is actually quite different from what these two books are actually getting across. The spiritual gift of prophecy is, as Joshua Coots reminded us in our adult life class just a few weeks ago, has to do with reminding people of what God has said. Notice when you read through the Old Testament prophets, their words were not specifically apocalyptic or, or end time related in nature at all. Yes, some of them had some foretelling, um, but most of the words written in their books are retelling and reminding the people of what God has said in the past. There are words spoken by God about his promises to the nation of Israel at the time. For instance, we see such a promise in 2 Chronicles 7, 11-22. I won't read the whole thing, but within this passage, we have what is quite a well-known verse in verse 14, which reads, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and restore their land. Then, a few verses later, starting in verses 19 and 20, he writes, If you or your descendants abandon me and my decrees, then I will uproot the people from this land, and so on. You can read the whole passage there. And it is these sort of passages that the Old Testament prophets, not just this one, but there are many in the, in the Old Testament the Old Testament prophets continually remind the Israelites about as they go through their time. It wasn't that they were prophesying something new or prophesying something for the future. They were aware of what God had said. Uh, and sorry, they, they were aware of what God had said and were trying to encourage the people to hear the voice of the Lord and turn the people from their wicked ways. In the same way, the individual today who is given the gift of prophecy is someone who will see what God has said in the Bible and remind the people of today what God has said. Remember we said last week that all spiritual gifts are given so we can help each other. We've hinted at it already today. Prophecy is the best way for the church for God's people to encourage, strengthen, and comfort each other. That is not to say that God may not give someone uh, a word about something a little further down the line, but by and large, prophecy is a word from God about today, for today, for the people of today, to strengthen, encourage, and comfort. There's one final observation that I would share with you today, and I believe I would be wrong to exclude it from any discussion on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. 
For all of the discussion about spiritual gifts, all of them are useless if we do not show love to each other. Notice that 1 Corinthians 12 and 14 deal specifically with the gifts of the Spirit. Right at the end of chapter 12, uh, verse 31, Paul writes, So you should earnestly desire the most helpful gifts, but now let me show you a way of life that is best of all. And then we have chapter 13. And, and it's unfortunate that our uh, chapter system has, has split up these passages because normally the, the Corinthian church would have read all of this in one flow and they would have seen the, the continuity that is taking place here. So Paul says, let me show you a way that is best of all. And chapter 13 is probably one of the most famous passages in the Bible, uh, considered to be the love chapter. At the beginning of chapter 13, Paul writes, and it's on your, on your slide there, If I could speak all the languages of earth and, and of angels, but I didn't love others, I would only be a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I had the gift of prophecy, and if I stood all of God's secret plans and possessed all knowledge, and if I had such faith that I could move mountains, but didn't love others, I would be nothing. If I gave everything I had to the poor and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it. But if I didn't love others, I would have gained nothing. You see, for all the discussion about spiritual gifts, all of them are useless if we do not love others, if we do not show love to others. If the use of spiritual gifts causes division or hurt, we must not use them. It would be far better to never have had, or perhaps at least never use a spiritual gift, if it hurts the body of Christ. For instance, I believe that God has seen fit to give me the gift of speaking in tongues. But in our setting, speaking in tongues would only cause confusion. So, I don't use it. In public. Rather, I display a desire to encourage people and to love them. Yes, we must be obedient and use the gifts that God has given us, but not at the expense of love. If we use our gifts and do not display love in the midst of it, we are a clanging symbol and we would have gained nothing. Paul says a few verses later, sorry, I don't have it on the screen this time, uh, in 1 Corinthians 13, 8, prophecy and speaking in unknown languages and special knowledge, yes I do, see here it is, prophecy and speaking in unknown languages and special knowledge will become useless, but love will last forever. And at the end of the chapter, he writes, these three things last forever, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. It is no mistake that this chapter falls right in the middle of a discussion about spiritual gifts. This chapter is here to remind us that there are more important things than spiritual gifts. It is here to remind us that the ability to heal someone or speak in unknown languages, that there's something more important than that. There are more important things than prophecy or any one of the spiritual gifts. And we can use our spiritual gifts all we want. But if we fail to love people, then we fail to use our spiritual gifts properly. Our displays of love will always have more of an impact than anything we could ever accomplish by using spiritual gifts. And if you truly display love towards others, both Christians and non-Christians, the use of spiritual gifts will only enhance what God is doing through you. So to recap quickly then, not everyone is, given a, is gifted with every gift, and we don't get to choose the gifts we're given. 
Secondly, if you are seeking for a particular gift, ask God for prophecy. And third, love is more important than any of the gifts. Love first and use your gifts second. And I would add one final reminder in all of this discussion. Paul's greatest concern from the start to the finish is always the well-being of the church. It's always the well-being of people. Our concern, the deep conviction in us should always be for the well-being of the, the church and the people we live among. If we follow the instructions well to love and use the gifts that God has given us through the Holy Spirit, there is no telling what God will accomplish through His church. Amen. Will you bow with me in prayer? Father, we thank You. We thank You for the opportunity to dig into Your Word. To look at the spiritual gifts that You have given us. To address some of the, the concerns and the questions. Thank you that we are able to read your word and hear what you have to say about spiritual gifts. And I pray that you would ignite in people. As Paul uh, encouraged Timothy, reignite the flame that is within you. That you would ignite within people a desire to use their gifts. I know sometimes it's uncomfortable. I know sometimes it puts us in places we don't necessarily want to be, but for the benefit of the church, for the, for the benefit of the people, and for your glory, I pray that people will accept the gifts that you have given them and walk out that calling that you have placed in people. I ask you, Lord, that you would speak to us about our gifts, that you would ignite those within us. And we pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. As a closing, I'd just like to read from Numbers 6, 24 to 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful week.